I thought when he originally stopped, he was going to get on the ground, but he didn't. When he stopped, he turned and faced me. And the stutter step that you sometimes see, like when people start to run and they kind of did the hop and then go, he does that. And as he does that, his right hand immediately goes into his waistband and his left hand is a fist at his side and he starts charging me. What did you think when you saw that? I didn't know. I mean, my initial thought was, is there a weapon in there? Is there a knife? Is there a brick? It, what, what's in there? Why is your hand going there? We're tra- taught to let me see your hands. As you know, some of the eyewitnesses have said when at that moment he turned around, he turned around and put his hands up. That would be incorrect. Incorrect. No way? No way. So you say he starts to run, does a stutter step, starts to come towards you. Mm-hmm. And? At that time, I gave myself another mental check. I, you know, can I shoot this guy? You know, can't, legally, can I? And the question I answered myself was, I have to. If I don't, he will kill me if he gets to me. He's already overpowered me once. If he gets to me, I will not survive. Even though he's, what, 35, 40 feet, feet away? Once he's coming in that direction, why, if he hasn't stopped yet, when's he going to stop? So you've already fired twice. He starts to come towards you. After he's coming at me and I decide to shoot, I fired a series of shots and paused. What did you see? I noticed at least one of them hit him. I don't know where, but I saw his body kind of just flinch a little. And after that, I paused and I again yelled, you know, stop, get on the ground, giving him the opportunity to stop. And... He ignored all the commands and he just kept running. And so after he kept running again, I shot another series of shots. And at least one of those hit him because I saw the flinch. And he stopped. I stopped, correct. I stopped and I said, you know, get on the ground, get on the ground. Well, this time he's about 15 feet away. So I start backpedaling because he's just getting too close and he's still not stopping after. From what you I. You were backpedaling? Yes, away from him. Because I was like, he's already running through these shots. I mean, he, they weren't phasing him, it, it didn't, didn't matter to him. And he was looking through me, and as he gets to that 15 feet after I fire the second round of shots, he gets to about 8 to 10 feet, and as he does that, he kind of starts to lean forward like he's going to tackle me. And 8 to 10 feet is close. I mean, that, if he's going to tackle me, he's going to tackle me at that point. And I looked down my barrel of my gun, and I fired, and what I saw was his head, and that's where it went. Some witnesses have also said that they actually saw you stand over him That'd and shoot incorrect. him the top of his head. That would be incorrect. And... He's down now. Yes. You know he's dead? Yes. Whenever I had actually seen that bullet go into his head, and I actually saw that, and I saw the face that he had go blank. His, everything was just blank. And when he landed, he had fell face first and actually slid on his face and upper body. And as he did that, his feet had come up in the air from all the momentum he had from running at me. And then when it came to rest, his feet then collapsed. And I knew immediately that he had passed. And when you look back, is there anything you could have done differently that would have prevented that killing from taking place? No. Nothing? No. If he would have gotten on the sidewalk when, and followed Dorian Johnson to the sidewalk, I probably never would have noticed cigarettes. I would have gone and gotten lunch and continued my day. He would have continued his. Some of the witnesses have said they thought you were out of control, that somehow you had snapped. Mm-hmm. That would be incorrect. There was never, the only emotion I'd ever felt was fear, and then it was survival and training. And you're absolutely convinced, when you look through your heart and your mind, that if Michael Brown were white, this would have gone down in exactly the same way? Yes. No question? No question. The Brown family came out with a statement uh, last night where they said, we are profoundly disappointed that the killer of our child will not face the consequences of his actions. What do you think when you hear that? I think those are grieving parents who are mourning the loss of their son. Not only is there anything they could say, but again, you know, I'm sorry that their son lost his life. It wasn't the intention of that day. It's what occurred that day. And there's no, nothing you can say that's gonna make a parent feel better. It sounds like you don't think you were responsible. I did my job that day. Do you feel any remorse? Everyone feels remorse when a life's lost. Like I told you before, I never wanted to take anybody's life. You know, that's not the good part of the job. That's the bad part of the job. So yes, there is remorse. I guess really the only final question I have is, um, what's the most important thing 
that people need to believe about Darren Wilson. I just did my job. I did what I was paid to do, and that was my job. I followed my training. The training took over. The training led me to what happened. I maintained the integrity of this investigation. That's it.